you, Jesus. Why don't you go ahead and continue to worship him? Oh, Jesus, come and do what you are famous for. God, we believe it. Oh, we believe you can do anything. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, we worship you.
Oh 
Oh, I invite you one more time. I have come with one purpose. That's to lift up Jesus. And if that is why you are here today, I encourage you to worship him with everything that you have today. Oh, let's receive from him what you give. Oh, he gives back to you. Oh, so let's just worship him in one mind, in one spirit. Oh, across this house one more time. Lift up your voices in song and worship as we worship him together.
Jesus. We believe for it, Jesus. You are the way. Oh, somebody worship him. You are the way. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you. God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you. God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in sanctuary hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh let's praise him let's praise him God did amazing things here last night God filled with the Holy Ghost God God washed us God cleansed us God pulled all the broken pieces put them together hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. If you were not able to be here last night, I want you to go out of the sanctuary, get your phones, watch the service, then come back. I'm just kidding. You need to watch it. And not just watch it. Be engaged with it. And when there's an altar call, have the altar call at your house. Because God did miracles here last night. God did miracles in this place last night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing today. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like God is going to do something incredible again today. We've enjoyed the ministry at Brother and Sister Harvey. Thank you so much for being willing to come and to minister to this church. And Amen. I... I know that God has got his hand on everything and he's watching over us and he knows exactly what we need and he knew exactly who we needed to have here. So I think we should just relax and let the Holy Ghost do what it needs to do. You all right with that? Let's just let the Holy Ghost do what it needs to do. Brother, would you come bring the word of the Lord here today? Love you. Praise the Lord, you be seated. We will never do anything for God without opposition. And uh, 
when my wife and I went to um, Willimatic or Ledyard to work with the uh, Mohegan tribe and the uh, Pequa, um, we it was a situation that had to be dug out from the very beginning. And when we got there, we were attacked spiritually. Uh, my wife and I struggled for a long, <laughs> a long time. Uh, but through it all, he that endureth, he that endureth. Through it all today, we have a young man with the Pequa tribe that wants us to mentor them into ministry. Amen. He is the pastor of the Congregational Church on the Mohegan Reservation. And he is reaching out to us, reaching out to Pastor Greeley, which is our host pastor, to be his mentor in ministry. Amen. Amen. On the Pequa side, um, there is a young man that is very famous with the tribe that has not been in church, has not been um, given his heart to God, but, but he came and he visited. We preached every Sunday with the Pequa tribe, um, made wonderful friends there on the reservation uh, at the spiritual center. And this young man came a couple of times, and uh, we bonded immediately, became close friends. And I felt led to go visit him at his home. And I looked him in the eye, and I told him, I said, Ralph, God's got his hand on you, and your tribe needs you. Because your mother, which is the spiritual leader, is 81 years old. And it's going to have to be a Pequa in this particular situation. It's going to have to be a Pequa to use this building on the reservation, which is a gorgeous place. Uh, your people need you, but you need God. And he said, did you come here on your own? No, did anybody ask you to come here? I said, no. I said, I had to find out where you live. I'm coming looking for you, man. And... Uh, he started tearing up. He said, yes, I, I've thought about that. He said, I need to get my heart right with God. He said, I, I've wondered if God could ever use me as messed up as I have been to reach my people. And I said, buddy, I said, God's got his hands all over you. And now this young man is reaching to Brother Greeley. Brother Greeley is going to be his mentor we're going to get him pray through to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. And where he's going to enter into the ministry and he's going to reach his people for the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. But it came with a price. It came with opposition. Don't ever think because you have opposition you're not in the will of God. Sometimes, sometimes we go through things because we're in the will of God. Amen. Sometimes you experience things because you are anointed. Not because you're not. And so we need to have wisdom. We need to endure. I'm telling you, you endure, endure. That, that, is, that is a word that we do not like. Amen. <laughs> wait on the Lord. Oh, Lord. who wants to Wait. Not me, not me, not me. Hey Amen. I don't want to wait on nothing, especially uh, when it comes to living for God. <laughs> Amen. But we are all taught that we've got to wait. For they that wait upon the Lord or trust in the Lord, they shall renew their strength. We're so thankful, Pastor. Gillis, thank you so much for your hospitality, your kindness. Amen. In the first class uh, accommodations, first class hotel, first class church. 
Amen. I love to see a church that does things uh, with uh, excellence. Amen. Give yourself a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We will be leaving uh, uh, probably the second week or of September, heading back to Tucson at, after we go to General Conference. But we have the uh, the Yaqui tribe, the Apache tribe, and the Tohoda Odom tribe. We're setting up tent revivals on those reservations. And please pray for us as God would give us uh, his favor. Praise God. My wife being full-blood Navajo, uh, she, she really, her presence helps open a lot of doors with the Native American people. And uh, because of her, they listen to me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'd, I'd hate to know uh, if I walked in there like John Wayne and said, Hello, pilgrim. <laughs> Uh, but my, my wife, my, my wife, she, she uh, her mom and dad, of course, they're on the reservation. Mom just recently passed. Her dad's favorite movie star, John Wayne. He likes watching John Wayne shoot those Indians. And I'm thinking, man, what a, what a, and it just shows that we're bigger than all of that. We're bigger than our past. You know what I'm saying? Uh <laughs> A lot of things have been done in the, in the past that is not right in every culture. But we don't live there. We live right now. Today is the day of salvation. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I want to get into the word of the Lord today. The book of Exodus, the 28th chapter. Amen. Exodus 28, 1 through 3. And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest office. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithmar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make, notice this, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother. For what purpose? For glory and for beauty. Praise God. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted. And this is who we want to speak to today. The wise hearted in this congregation. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Lamb of God, we love you today. We love your word. And we love what we feel in this house right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. You can be seated. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. When we use the word glory, in most cases, it is two Hebrew words, one of two. One is kabak or doxa. And this word glory means something that comes out of the inner man, that comes out in a manifestation that is given to God in other words, it's something that I give to God. Now, there's other Hebrew words for glory that do not mean that. But most of the time, it is doxa or kabat. As I give you an example, Psalms 50 and 23, Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me, is what he says. So in our text, we produce the glory of God. But here also in our text, we are to produce a garment. We are to produce a garment for someone else other than ourselves. A garment that will bring glory and beauty to Aaron and his sons, which are the priests. Now today in our New Testament setting, we are all kings and priests unto our God. 
And so everyone that is sitting in this congregation, God's got his hand on you. That, that there, is, there is no such thing if, as God saving someone just to sit and stare. Amen. God saved you for his purpose. Not only did he save you because he loved you, but he saved you for purpose. There is something for everybody to do in this congregation. Amen. We are the body of Christ. Amen. I thank God that I today, as a young man given my heart at age 15 years old, I still have the fingerprints of the elders and the, and, and, and the precious sisters that were in the church that loved me when I was unlovable. That when I walked into the house of God, they made me feel like I was important. And they, 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 they hugged me and they, 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 they touched my lives. I bear the fingerprints of many, many people. And so do you, I'm sure. And so this is a garment that brings glory and beauty for my brother. That he may minister unto God. A garment that enhances his ability to stand before God. A garment that will produce glory. That will encourage his inner man. In other words, it is a garment that I make for my brother that puts him in the best light before God. A garment that produces beauty that will present him. Someone else, not you but present him in the best light for all that see him. The Bible tells us we are kings and priests unto our God. Now, I want you to notice something here. We have the fruit of the Spirit. If you are born again, you have the fruit of the Spirit. But remember, no fruit tree consumes its own fruit. The fruit that you produce is not only to enhance your walk with God, but the fruit that is produced in your life is for someone else besides you. In other words, it's not all about you, my friend. It's about someone else. And you become someone else. From someone else. (laughs) Praise God. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is for others' consumption. It is to reach out to a lost and a dying world. But not only that, but to your brother. That's why the Bible says that God is love. And if we accomplish that one thing in life, that we love one another, we have accomplished a great, great, and noble accomplishment. Because the gifts of the Spirit, notice, the gifts of the Spirit are not for you. They're for somebody else. The fruit of the Spirit, it's not for you. It's for someone else. So when you come to the house of God, and I need a blessing and I need encouragement, I feed from the fruit that comes from you. And you feed from the fruit that comes from me. And iron sharpeneth iron. And we're here, we're encouraging one another. We are a body. Amen. And we are jointly fit together. And our calling is to love one another. (laughs) Praise God. Amen. Amen. It is the fruit of those that are around me that I feed from. You know, and you, you, sometimes you just don't have to, sometimes you don't have to say anything to encourage somebody. You know, we, you know most of us, you know, I'm sure everybody here pretty well knows everybody. And, and, you know, I'm sure we have some visitors here and thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Thank God you're here. Amen. But, 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 but we, we, we learn one another, and, 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 and we, we know. See, I, I, I know your struggle. I know many of us, when we go home today, we may go home to a hostile environment. 
You may be the only one living for God in your home. And you're going to go home today and you're going to struggle because you have a loved one, a husband or a wife, or maybe even children, that are not on the same page that you are. And you have struggles and you have things that you're dealing with in your body. You have things that you're dealing with in your finances. You have things you're dealing with in your home. But yet you're here. And whenever I see you coming in those doors and I see you being faithful, I can take note of that and say, listen, if she can do that, I can do that. If he can come to the house of God and I know what he's dealing with and I know the struggle in his life, I know that my God will give me strength to, amen, to be in the house of God. We are encouragers of one another. We are our brother's keeper. And so uh, it is so beautiful. The encouragement of the brother, brethren, is so beautiful. We are to love and to nurture one another. We speak many times concerning the word anointing. And uh, uh, when we talk about anointing, we, we, we talk about it as like it is a dove that lands here and and maybe lands over there, and, and it's, it's here today, and, and it may be a couple of weeks before we see anointing again. We struggle sometimes with what seems to be God's reluctance to anoint us and manifest himself in our presence. Is it that God, that, is it that God wants to tantalize us by touching us here and there once in a while? But I submit to you today that the anointing can be resident in a congregation. That the anointing can be resident in a life that is given to others. If we ever get the revelation, amen, that we walk through those doors not only to receive, but but we should walk through those doors and say, God, I am ready to give. I am ready to touch. I am ready to love. And and, and, and see, if I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, in other words, if I seek to be a blessing more than to be blessed, amen, I will be blessed by being a blessing. And that's why the Bible said it is more blessed to give than to receive. But we live in a country, in an environment, in a, in a, in a, 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 a culture uh, that's gimme, gimme. I'm going to go to church and get my fix, bless God. I'm going through it all week and I'm going to go to the house of God and get my fix. And I understand what you're talking about. I really do. You know, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I, hey, I, you need to hang around people like that, that talk like that. But I'm telling you something. There is a deeper existence in God than just coming to church and saying, I need my fix. Amen. We need to come into the house of God and say, God, who can I touch? Who can I encourage? Who can I love? Who can I hug? Who can I help today? Amen. And when you look outside of yourself, then the anointing will be in your life. Because you're not looking for you, you're looking for your brother. When you go to a restaurant, it's not just going to a restaurant. You're sensitive to the little waitress that walks up to you. You're sensitive to the waiter. You know, I've always told our church, if you can't afford to leave a good tip, you need to go home and eat. Well, somebody said, well, I didn't get good service. Well, who does two wrongs make a right? Who are you, my brother? Are you them or you, do you belong to the Lord? You don't have no idea what that little waitress has been going through. She may be loaded up on Valium. Yeah. She may have just lost her mother. 
She may be going through the trial of her life and you're going to sit there and you're going to exact her and say, well, I didn't get a refill on my drink and I didn't do that. Now, no, you can be that way or you can be sensitive to the surroundings. Amen. And you can actually minister to the hurts and the needs that are around you. I submit to you today that the anointing is meant to be resident in my life. Amen. And it only can reside in my heart when I look outside of myself. If you are in, you've got this entitlement mentality and you walk in and you're always about what can somebody give me, your existence in God is going to be limited. So limited. Because God will take care of you when you take care of somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I like what Brother Marvin Hicks years years ago said. "Not Not a stagnant pool of polywogs and tadpoles, but a river. Amen. And I believe that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For what purpose? What purpose? Is it to spill the waters on the ground? No, it is to give life and encouragement to everyone that I meet. Amen. Amen. I, I don't ever I, I I I don't ever walk past a little a little boy or a little girl without speaking to them, touching them, loving them. Hey man, how you doing? Oh, look at you, honey. Aren't you so pretty today? You know why? Because you are making impressions in the heart of that little tender child. Oh, yeah. See, when, my, when I was this 15-year-old messed up kid with a big red fro, man, I, everybody wore fro's back in the 70s. And, man, I had, I had my big red fro. Can you imagine me with red hair? And I don't know. Sister, I had it. Amen. And I had my walking suit on and I had my dingo boots, son. I'm telling you what. I was something. I don't know what, but I was something. (laughs) Amen. But I walked into that church and I was so messed up. And uh, my elder pastor, Elder C.C. Wheatley, he, uh, he wasn't much for saying things. Uh, publicly to you, but he was good about hugs. And he hugged me every time he saw me. No words needed. (laughs) No words needed because I never got hugs. My home did not have hugs in it. Uh, So you never know who was walking through the door and what they're going through. And so it is more blessed to give than to receive. But in giving, I receive. Here's what I'm saying. We, when we walk into a room, we should be able to make a difference with our presence. Not because of us, but because of him that shows through us. Let the glory of God, let the presence of God, let the anointing of God, let let the world know that Jesus has touched your life. Let everybody know, amen, once I was blind, but now I see. Amen. I, I heard a guy say one time, I'm so glad I'm not like the world. And I thought about that and I said, no. I just thank God that I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. I thank God that God's brought me a long, long way. I thank God for what he's done in my life. Amen. I compare where I am right now to where I've been. When I look back over my life and see the goodness of God, amen, I want to share it with everybody. Hey. Don't be spiritually selfish. Hey, but it is the wise-hearted among us that lose ourselves in worship in the house. 
They realize there's something bigger than me in this place. For some that are here, church may be just a place to go on Sunday. A place where my friends are. But for the rest of us, it is a paradise in a time of distress. Amen. Amen. Some may say, oh, well, it's church time. But others say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's the crowd you need to hang around with. Let your best friends be, let us go. Let us go. Amen. Not let us stay, but let us go to the house of the Lord. That's who I want to sit next to in church. Praise God. Hey man, hey yeah yeah yeah. Hey man, I want to sit by somebody that's going to worship God. Hey man, I want to sit by somebody that's going to encourage me to worship God. Hey yeah yeah yeah. Praise God. Life is too short any other way. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. That don't sound like entitlement to me. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thank God for what he's already done. Amen. Enter his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Man, you know, the angel told Mary, and I'm going to give you a Georgia paraphrase here. Amen. The angel comes up to Mary and said, girl, you're highly favored of God. And that which is in your womb, oh, he's going to change the world. What did Mary do? Elizabeth was pregnant at the same time. She goes over there and she shares the good news with Elizabeth. And she basically says, girl, God's got his hand on you. Amen. And that which is in your belly, God, you know, God's got this thing under control. We're both hurting. We're all swole up here. Praise God. Amen. But it's going to be all right. You know, when you're swole up and you're hurt, you need somebody to tell you, it's all right. It's going to be all right. Amen. But the Bible says because Mary went and voiced a salutation to her sister that something leaked within her womb. And a baby that may not have moved very much up to that point leaped, amen, because encouragement, a word fitly spoken, is something that we all must have. We need to learn how to give it, not to seek it, because if you give it, it will come back. <laughs> Cast your bread upon the water. Amen. Because I with my mouth can make a heaven or I can make a hell. Not only in my life, but in somebody else's. Proverbs 8, 28 and 13. He that covereth his sins. I want you to notice this. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. This is the person who's doing the sinning. He's not going to prosper. You've got to deal with your sins. You better deal with them before they deal with you. Fall upon the rock. Don't let the rock fall on you. It's more easy. It's a lot better to fall on the rock than have the rock fall on you. And so we know this. But when we read Proverbs chapters 11 and 12, I'm going to paraphrase this. We come off with the understanding. Now hear me. I'm changing I'm, I'm turning the coin over. Whosoever covereth an iniquity in his brother's life tendeth to love and to life. The wise man or woman senses something is not right in their brother or their sister. And instead of starting up the, the gossip uh, 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 machine, they go to God and they get on the loom and they start making a garment for the situation. You know, how many times you, uh, you, you come into the house of the Lord and Sister Jones is there. I hope, is there a Sister Jones in the house? I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, you know. Sister Jones is there and she normally shakes your hand and she's normally really friendly. But this day you walked into the church, Sister Jones didn't even look you in the eye. She wasn't very friendly today. Our brother Hank, brother Hank, you know, he's normally 
uh, shakes your hand and says, how you doing, brother? But today, brother Hank, it seemed like he was ignoring you. That's what you think. Now, you can be so sensitive and say, I wonder what's wrong with him. What's wrong with her? What she got against me? What? I didn't do anything to her. She wouldn't even shake my hand. Uh, what's wrong with Brother Hank? He, 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 uh, uh, he acted like, uh, I wonder who's been talking about me. You can be that person. Or you can say, God, Sister Jones must be going through something in her life. Brother Hank, he's not been acting normal lately. God, I'm going to go to prayer for Brother Hank. I, I, I'm going I'm to get on the I'm going to get on the the loom, and I, I'm going to weave together a garment for my brother. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to weave a garment for my sister because I want them to recover. Hey, you can start up the rumor mill or you can start up the loom. Which one are you going to do? You want the anointing? You better start up the loom. Hey, man. Hey, man, you go running somebody else down. You know what you do? You make yourself look bad. That's what you do. Because the person you're telling it to knows they, they'll bite me if I ever fall. Yeah. But if you're an encourager, oh my God, have mercy. The headship or the leadership of the church is responsible for correction in the house. We have a pastor. God never called you and me to be a watchdog over everyone else. And if you ever let that spirit get in your heart, you will find something wrong with everybody you meet. Can I get a witness in the house? God does not give us a right to expose and promote failure in my brother, but he has given us a commandment to cover it. Amen. God said, I found you polluted in your own blood. You were struggling in your own blood. Failure, sin, Bad decisions. Oh God, we're struggling. We're struggling. We're struggling. I got a bad phone call before church. My mom is sick. My dad is sick. Oh, the doctor told me this, and I've got to go for a biopsy next week, and we struggle. We struggle. We struggle. Yes, we do. Amen. And he said, The Lord God said, I've saw you and you were struggling in your own blood. You, you were wounded. You were bleeding. And he said, and I covered you. I covered you. I covered you and I looked down at you and I said, live, live, my brother, live. This is a picture of the church. We are to cover one another because we all will recover if someone don't keep picking at the scab. I'm going to make it if somebody will fight the buzzards off of me. Amen. I'm going to make it if somebody will cover my heart and cover my mind. Amen. And just be there for me and, and support me. You may know my failure, but see, you're still loving me. You're still covering me. Amen. Hallelujah. We are to make a garment for our brother and our sister. If our young people, if our young people go out in this world and they fall into sin, they should never feel ashamed to come back to the house of God. They should never feel more welcome in the arms of a stranger 
than they are in the arms of their brother. They should be able to walk through those doors and know, I know I've sinned, but I know where I can go and people will help me and they'll love me and they'll encourage me. They won't put me down. They won't talk about me, but they will cover me until God heals my heart. I like what John Maxwell said one time. John Maxwell said he had a conversation with his children when they were younger. And he said, Dad has one request for you. When you leave this home and you go out here and you're on your own, Dad has a request for you. Would you do this one thing for me? And they said, what's that, Dad? They said, if you ever fall, if you ever find yourself struggling in life, come to me first. Don't turn somewhere else. Come home. Come home first. I want you to know you're welcome to come home. I want you to know that dad is ready to hear what you have. I may not agree with what you did, but I'm here to listen. And I'm here to love you. And I'm here to encourage you until you can be healed. And the church needs to be the same way. Where do I go when my heart is overwhelmed? I go to the rock, but I need the body too. Because Jerusalem, which is above us, is mother of us all, and I need mama. There's times, I'm telling you, there's sometimes you just need to run to mama. Amen. You get in a lot of pain, first thing you want to, you don't run to daddy as much as quick as you run to mama. And, and, and it's true, a lot of people may not pray, but they'll run to the church. But mama knows how to teach them how to pray. Mama knows how to nurture them to the place to where they can be in right standing with God again or for the first time. So God said, I found you polluted and I covered you. I covered you until you could recover. Amen. And so this is my message today that we know that God created man and woman. And, and, and the first thing that God did when man sinned in the garden was to shed blood of an innocent animal. Something had to die that something else could live. He shed his blood or that blood for a reason. And what was that reason? And we know that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. We know that. Was it to atone for man's sin only? No. But it was also to give him a covering. The covering that he tried to make for himself was inadequate. Oh. So it does matter, don't it? And so God makes a covering for Adam and Eve that they could not make for themselves. When I am wounded, when my heart is overwhelmed, I can't make a garment for myself. Ah, you know, very few of us can encourage ourselves to, to, to keep moving forward and keep going. And oh yeah, I know there's times we must encourage ourselves in the Lord, but but you know, you know, we're human beings too, aren't we? Amen. And, and so I, I need a garment made for me. I need somebody to cover me. And I, I can't make that garment for me, but you can. You're the only one that can help me. You're the only one that can love me because I'm not loving myself right now but you can love me and you can make a garment for me and you can allow my heart to mend and to recover amen can somebody say praise God so when he walked out of the garden that day it wasn't with just fig leaves tied together but it was with animal skins it was a covering that God made for him a garment that was provided for him. Amen. He did not just shed his blood to redeem us, but he also shed his blood to clothe us with his righteousness. Amen. Romans 14 and 4, Who art thou that judges some of the other man's servant? He shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Amen. We, where are the weavers in the house today? Where are the wise-hearted men and women today that are here 
as representatives of the love of God? Where are the loom workers today? Where are the wise-hearted souls that are ready to go to work, not tearing things apart, but putting things together? A coat of many colors. Amen. Sewing things together. The spirit and the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. 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 There is an altar, and I, my brother, stand at an altar, and I'm ready to cover you with my prayers, my love, and my concern. I will beat the buzzards off of you. Now, now listen, don't expect this pastor and his wife to do all that. They, 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 they'll do that. But you need to do that, too. You're in the ministry, too. Amen. He gave, listen, he gave the five-fold ministry. Why did God give the five-fold ministry? The Bible tells us it's very clear. For the perfecting of the saints and their ministry. There is the five-fold ministry and then there's the ministry of the saints. And the purpose of a pastor in the church is to equip you to be a minister. We're all ministers. Notice I didn't say preachers. I said, ministers. Praise God. Amen. In other words, God's grace is greater than your judgment. When you look at a brother's failure or a sister's failure, God's grace is greater than your judgment. God alone is able to convict of sin. He doesn't need any help from me. Amen. We're not going to pander sin. We're not going to pat it. No, no, we can't do that. No, but we can love the individual. Amen. Until they can recover. Amen. Praise God. Come. And I, no, 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 here's, here's, here's the meat of my message. Remember Noah. Noah is coming off of the ark. He has planted a vineyard. And now he's intoxicated. And we could talk a lot about that. There's a Bible study within that, with that right there. But he's intoxicated, and he's drunk, and, and to make matters worse, he's naked. Hear me. He is vulnerable to observation and criticism. Sound like us, don't it? When we sin, we're open. He is vulnerable to observation and opinion. But soon one of his sons comes in upon the scene, and his name was Ham. And he sees his father's nakedness, and he runs out to tell his brothers, but not so fast. In the Hebrew, we see that this situation was a little worse than what we read at it in the King James Version. In the Hebrew, it says, He raha. He looked upon his father's situation with satisfaction and with glee. There was something wrong in the heart of this young man before that fall. Before Noah ever did that, there was something that a seed that had got some roots in his soul. I, you know, I've heard people say when, uh, when, when someone would fall or sin, oh, I knew it, I knew it, I, I, I knew it. Yeah, you better shut your mouth. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. It don't surprise me that she did that. There's more hope for her than there is you. There's more hope for the soul that fell than there is the one that criticizes the fall or rejoices in the fall. And so the Bible said, or the, the Hebrew says, that, that he looked upon his father's situation with satisfaction <laughs> and with glee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then he nagag. He went and he told it with delight to his brothers. Remember, when this story's over with, Noah is going to be restored back to being a patriarch. But Ham is going to be cursed the rest of his life. Amen. You know why? Why was Ham cursed? 
Scripture tells us. He saw something in someone else's life that he refused to cover. There's more hope for a man who knows and still loves than the person that criticized him. But what did his brothers do? When his brothers heard about the situation, what did they do? They, they, they entered in backwards. They did not want to view the failure of their father. They did not want to view the failure and the sin of their father. And they walked in backwards, amen, and they covered their, bro- their father's nakedness with a garment, amen, or a blanket, and, this, and so here's the, here's the story. Look at the story. It's not about who is right or wrong. It's are you going to do the right thing? It's not about whether who sinned or, or, or fell or did this or did that. It's not about their sin. It's about, it, 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 it's more about you. How are you going to respond to it? And, and so... Uh, They covered their father's nakedness, but Ham refused to cover anything. They knew that in the morning, that when the sun would rise, that it would bring forth answers. And if we can cover one another and love one another, time and and prayer and the grace of God and tears, amen, will restore. It's going to be all right. It's, It's going to pass. Amen. God would take care of it. Amen. And so what my message is to you today, don't worry about what somebody else does. You do the right thing. You do the right thing. You do the right thing. When I become a garment maker, I bring peace to those that are around me because I have peace in my own soul. Refuse to allow yourself to see too much. Love, but you know, then again, love is not blind. Some people said love is blind, but no. Love sees all sometimes and knows all, but loves anyway. Amen. So don't get the phone in your hand. Sit down at the loom and make a garment for your brother. Look for a needle, not a cell phone. Look for a loom and not the gossip mill. It's time to make a garment. A word fitly spoken here and there. It's time for healing. And so in closing here today, I want you to notice that that there was two cherubs upon the mercy seat. And uh, they were alike in ways, but they were very different at the same time. Uh, They were, the Bible says they were beaten and formed from pure gold. They had hammer marks all over them. Sounds like life, don't it, brother? Don't it sound like life? We've all got scars. We've all got a story to tell. These two cherubs, they're there, and they're beaten, and they've got scars and tribulations from the goldsmith's hammer. But that's all right, because... They were not created to examine one another. They were examined to look at the mercy seat. They wasn't there to find each other's fault. One angel could say, you you got a dent under your left eye. I don't have that. And the other angel could say, yeah, but you got one on your ear and I don't have that. There's none of us better than anybody else. We're all in need of a Savior We're all in need of a garment. We're all in need of a covering. We're all in need of the body to love me, to nourish me. Amen. And so all they were created for is to look down in submission. Amen. At the mercy of God. And I come here today to say it's time once again to look at mercy. It's time once again. To look at mercy. Because he said, I found you polluted in your own blood. And when I found you, I didn't look at you and say, 
What did you do? How come you're down there? Why are you bleeding? He didn't want to know the details. And you shouldn't want to know the details. All you know is somebody's hurting. All you know is that your brother or your sister is in need of love. And so he said, I covered you. I covered you. I covered the iniquity. And I looked down at you and I said, live no more. And I come here today to say that you may be here today and you may, you may, may feel like you have been beaten to death by this world. And you may feel like you are struggling just to hold on to your sanity. But I'm telling you, there's a church here that loves you. There is a pastor and his wife. You are in the household of mercy. You are here today and there is a congregation. There is a people. There is a church that's here to love you and to see you be restored. And not only restored, but to grow in God and to excel and be what God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's praise Him together. Let's praise Him together. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm here, my brother. I've got a garment for you. And if you need prayer today, I want you to know i got a garment for you. I'm going to wrap this thing around your shoulders and I'm going to pray deliverance in your life. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God's going to set your life in order. Listen to me. Listen to me. Elijah. He's running for his life and he's under a juniper tree. And he falls asleep. And he wakes up and there's an angel there. And he's got food and drink. And somehow or another, Elijah went back to sleep. And when he woke up, the angel said, eat again. Eat again. And Elijah could say, I'm not hungry. I've already eaten. But the angel said, eat again because the journey ahead of you, you're going to need extra nourishment. I don't know what's in store for America. I don't know what's in store for our country. There's a journey ahead of us. But I do know this. We're going to need nourishment to get there. We're going to need encouragement. I'm telling you today, you're going to need this church in the days to come more than you ever have in your life. You're going to need brethren. You're going to need a pastor in your life in the days to come more than you've ever comprehended in your mind. Amen. And I also want to leave this one final thought with you. Iron sharpeneth iron. And sometimes we look at the ministry and we say, Pastor, I need this. Pastor, I need to talk to you. Pastor, Pastor's wife, I've got this issue. I need to talk. But do don't you understand that when iron sharpens iron, both lose something? Don't you understand it is tough being a pastor? Don't you understand that this man and woman only have so much they can give? Their family that are heavily involved in everything that goes in this church. Don't ever think that they're Superman. They need your love just like you need their love. They need your understanding. Let me tell you, you you guys have just gone through a building project. You've gone through, what a beautiful job you've done. But I know you're tired. I know you're tired. 
And God is here today to breathe life back into you. To encourage you and to rekindle. We, we, we all get weary. We all get tired. But today, I want to, I want to do something special. Because ministry very few times has a place where they can go. We, you know, we're, we're just considered to be indestructible, but that is not the case. We struggle. We struggle. And I, I, I want, I, I'd like for this pastor and his wife to come up here. I want to pray for you, my brother and sister. And I tell you, your, your family, your family, if your family can come to, people that's a part of this family, would you come up here right now?
I wonder if you could reach over and pray for somebody right now. Lord, I'm not praying for myself. I'm praying for them. God, maybe for the first time in my life, I'm forgetting about me. And I'm thinking about somebody else. God, help me to grow up. I've been a spiritual child long enough. I'm a, I'm a spiritual junkie. I go from one high to the next. One problem to one, to one solution. One after another. One after another. God, help me, Lord Jesus, to find another realm in living for you. Help me to find another dimension, Lord. Lord, where I can look outside of myself into the heart of another. And that I can look outside of myself into the heart of my brother. And when I do, when I do, I'll receive refreshing myself. I'll receive encouragement by myself. Yeah, you'll take care of my issues when I take care of others. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness and all these other things, other things shall be added unto you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on now, let's intercede. Lamb of God, touch my brother. Touch my sister. I need you right now. I need you in this house. I need you in this house. Challenge me, God, to cover and not discover. Help me to cover until someone can recover in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Love one another. Come on now, just love one another. Love one another. Come on. Oh, this world's waiting for you outside. But you're in a different world right here. You're in a different environment. Don't be in a hurry to get back out those doors. Amen. Enjoy the presence of God right now. Enjoy, oh Lord. Bask in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bask in the presence of the love of your brother and your sister. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. Yes, we will. We're going to love one another. We're going to encourage one another. We're going to make it. We are going to make it because we stand together.
we all just lift our voice to heaven right now. Jesus, we love you. I want somebody to tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just a little bit more. Just lift your voice to him right now. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank him? Can we just thank him for what we feel flowing in this house right now? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who wish to stay, you're certainly invited to do so. Those who would let you like to go on out in the foyer, you're also invited to do so. Please stop by the tables out there. They have some wonderful things to share with you, their vision. Amen. Take, and, take a few minutes and stay in fellowship. I think all the announcements are covered good enough. I don't need to go over them today. And God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.